Hey guys, right here I have a 2016 Ford Ranger 2.2 4x4 XLT. And today I'm going to make a startup and full vehicle tour video of it, show you the features inside and out. So here is the key. Let's go ahead and start it up first. There are welcome lights as you unlock the truck. The facelifted Ranger T6 in XLT trim receives an electric rack and pinion power steering system. The steering wheel on this trim is wrapped in leather with sport grips at 10 and 2. You can get the 2.2 diesel engine with either a 6-speed manual transmission or this Ranger's 6-speed automatic transmission. The automatic features sport mode and manual shifting capabilities. On the XLT, rear parking sensors are present together with a reverse camera with active guidance signs and two different views. Safety features on the Ranger XLT include two airbags, anti-lock braking system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, electronic stability control, hill launch assist, hill descent control, rollover mitigation, trailer sway assist, load adaptive control, load sensing proportionate valve, an alarm system with immobilizer, and isofix child seat anchor points for the outer two rear seats. As usual, let's turn on the hazards, lights, front and rear fog lights, take a look at the engine, and roll down the driver's side window. 16-inch 6-spoke alloy rims are standard on the XLT. This Ranger uses GT Radio Severo AT 25570 R16 tires. The front gets ventilated disc brakes while drum brakes are found out back. The suspension is double wishbones in front and leaf springs at the rear. 29.4 degrees, 21.5 degrees, and 25 degrees are the approach, the brake over, and the departure angles respectively. For Ford Motor Company, the Ranger nameplate first appeared between 1958 and 1960 as the base model from its short lived Edsel brand. After the discontinuation of Edsel, the Ranger name was then used as a trim level for various Ford F Series pickup trucks. By the 1983 model year, the Ranger became a standalone model for Ford in North America, slotting below the F Series. Globally, however, Ford only started to use the Ranger name from around 1998 on the rebadged versions of the Mazda B Series and BT50 pickups, which were not the same models as the one found in North America. The current Ranger, also known as the T6 Generation, first came out at the 2010 Australian International Motor Show, with sales starting in 2011. This time round, Ford developed the truck and Mazda used it as a second generation BT50. The T6 Ranger has received two facelifts so far, a major one in 2015 and a minor one in 2018. Starting in 2018 for the 2019 model year, the Ranger name will return to North America after a hiatus of 7 years since it was discontinued after the 2012 model year. The 2019 North American Ranger will look like the Global Ranger, albeit with a few changes inside and out to meet US regulations. This Ranger is powered by Ford's ZSD422 2.2-liter, dual of 8 cams, 16 valves, turbo diesel inline-4 engine with common rail direct injection. 
It produces 158 horsepower at 3200 RPM and 385 newton meters of torque at 1600 to 2600 RPM. Fuel tank size is 80 liters and the combined fuel consumption for the Ranger 2.2 4x4 double cab automatic is 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers. 214 grams of carbon dioxide is emitted per kilometer and this Ranger is a four wheel drive vehicle. The facelifted Ranger T6 went on sale in Malaysia in October 2015. All variants available are in the high rider configuration. Exterior features of the Ranger 2.2 XLT include automatic manual leveling halogen projector headlights, automatic wipers, halogen daytime running lights, front and rear fog lights, indicators on the side mirrors, chrome door handles and side mirrors, the spare tire mounted under the rear of the truck, and a sport bar for the cargo bed. Central locking, speakers right there, and down there, bottle holder and storage. And right here, window controls, all of the windows in this truck are powered, while the driver's side is the only side that gets a fully automatic function in both directions. Window lock. Mirror controls. To the right of the headlight switch, you do have the buttons to adjust the brightness, headlight level adjustment, and this button turns on the cargo bed light. Range of floor mats and door sills, and the driver's seat in this Ranger XLT gets full manual adjustments. This one controls the seat back, this one controls the seat height, this one down here controls the seat position, and this lever right here controls the lumbar support. Alright, so let's go ahead and see how she revs.
very simple air conditioning controls on off button air conditioning front and rear defrost different modes recirculation temperature with your maximum air conditioning and to the far left fan speed down here power outlets storage auxiliary and usb ports traction control button and this button activates or deactivates your hill descent control system four wheel drive controls and cup holders the ranger xlt comes with a ford sync head unit with a 4.2 inch color display various media connectivity options and six speakers for the sound system <laughs> I must say the stock sound system that this Ranger uses is actually quite good. It is a fairly simple head unit to use. To the right, Bluetooth telephone keypad and also doubles up as your preset stations for your FM, AM and news. And to the left, shortcut buttons for your CD, radio, media, phone, menu, clock, mute and sound system settings. Volume and power, tune, these four buttons right here corresponds to the four options on the display itself. Right here, Options, Device, Info, and Play Pause. Your directional pad, seat track buttons, it also doubles up as your on-hook off-hook buttons for the Bluetooth telephone system. And just above the air conditioning controls, Eject button, CD player, and Play Pause. Now, hit Options, and we can go to your Shuffle or Repeat track. Click the left button to go back. Under Device, you can add a device, delete, disconnect, cancel, and select the device itself. Information brings up more information regarding that particular track. And play pause. Now, once in the this menu, if you click back, it goes back to your list of Menus with radio, sync media, sync phone, and menu itself. Under menu, you do have your sync settings, sync apps, audio settings, clock settings, display, camera. And that's about it. If you hit cancel, it goes back to your audio menu. A bit of storage right up there. Electronic central locking, power folding side mirrors, on the steering wheel, the left spoke houses your directional pad, the up, down, left, right and OK buttons, which perform the same function as the directional pad right here. Below, audio controls, volume, voice control, mute, on-hook, off-hook buttons, or your seat track buttons. On the right spoke, below, cruise control and speed limiter controls, and above, the directional pad controls your multi-information display located within the instrument cluster. Right now, range, distance traveled, elapsed time, fuel used, average fuel consumption, speed, and back to your range. Click left and we can go between trip 1, trip 2, fuel economy information, driver assist and settings. On the right stalk, indicator controls. And on the left stalk, wiper controls. The steering wheel in this truck is tilt only. You adjust it using this lever right here. Front center armrest with storage below, auto dimming, rear view mirror,
front reading lights and interior light. Sunglass holder. Sun visor for the driver's side gets a vanity mirror and a couple of lights. And there are two grip handles for the driver, one on the A pillar and one right above. Alright, so I guess that's it for the startup. We can turn it off right now. And continue with the rest of the tour. Speaker, bottle holder, storage, and window control. Now, you can either flip the seat base up or flip the seat back down. To flip the seat base up, locate this strap right here, pull it, flip the seat base up, then hook it up, and you can access storage areas. Now, to flip the seat back down, pull this strap, flip it down and you can access the vehicle's jack, toolkit and whatnot. I did set the driver's seat to a position that I would feel comfortable in. I'm about 5 foot 7, which is about 1.7 meters tall. There is a bit of room to stretch out my feet underneath the driver's seat. As for leg room, I get about this much. And I get about this much in terms of headroom. It is actually not too bad back here. The seats are fairly nice and comfortable. Storage pockets on the front seat backs. Power outlet right down here. Rear center armrest with cup holders and right above for both sides at the back are grip handles. Cabin light To drop the tailgate down, go towards the tailgate itself and pull this lever. The cargo bed in the Ranger double cab measures 1549mm, 1560mm and 511mm in length, width and height respectively. Actual capacity of the cargo bed is 1.18 cubic meters. Payload is 1000 kilograms, while towing capacity is 3500 kilograms. A bed liner is standard for the cargo bed.
interior doors open quite wide and an almost 90 degree angle which does aid entry and exit from the rear seats. Adjustable headrests front and rear. Like the rear doors, the front doors do open quite wide as well, which again does aid entry and exit into the seats, but this time obviously the front seats. Window control, central locking, speakers, bottle holder and storage. The front passenger seat in this Ranger gets full manual adjustments as well with the same set of adjustments as the driver's side just that this side loses out on the height adjustment and the lumbar support. Lockable glove box. It is quite big. Like the driver's side grip handle on the A pillar. And right above. And the sun visor for this side gets a vanity mirror with a couple of lights as well. Alright, so let's start it up with the door closed. Alright, so that's it for the startup and full vehicle tour video of this 2016 Ford Ranger 2.2 4x4 XLT. Thanks for watching and goodbye.